Yo, what's up, guys? Josh Klo, Michael Weaver, and another episode of the Cleaver Podcast. I'm uh, gonna start off. We just hit 100 subscribers, so thank you everyone who has supported us in the last couple of months and subscribed to us. Uh, we've been talking about doing a giveaway for a T-shirt on a custom-made T-shirt. Well, today's the video we're gonna do the giveaway on. Uh, if you guys want to check the T-shirt out, it's actually gonna be on our Twitter, which the link will be down below. So you guys can check out that t-shirt. All you gotta do to get into the running for the t-shirt is like, subscribe, if you haven't already, and then comment below your favorite NFL player. And then uh, by Monday, we'll find out uh, you know, who won the, uh, the t-shirt. So make sure you guys do that. Um, but let's get right into this week's episode. Uh, we're gonna go off with uh, you know this week's news. A uh, couple, couple big headlines. Happening this week. Uh, the first one, I think we're going to talk about uh, Antonio Brown demanding a trade. Where will yeah. he go? What is, what is he worth? I mean, I think Antonio Brown is still one of the best receivers in the game. Um, he's, I don't know, first round is, that's what Pittsburgh's going to want, obviously. And if that's the case, then maybe Oakland because they have three of those first round picks. So, I mean, is Antonio Brown worth that first-round pick? I mean, if you got three of them. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, one of them like, could be expendable. You're already lost. I mean, they just lost Amari Cooper. Yeah. So. And Derek so, Carr could use that number one wide receiver. But the thing is, how far is Jay, or, uh, yeah, Jay Gruden? John Gruden. John Gruden, yeah. The other Gruden brother. How far is he willing to go? So. Um, well, they got money now. <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to go to either one or two teams. Uh, the first team is going to be the Cleveland Browns. I think the Browns are just an elite wide receiver away from and I'm contending for a Super Bowl title at this point. I mean, Baker Mayfield's looking like the lump, uh, the young prodigy, and they have a top five defense. So, literally, you know, and then they just signed Kareem Hunt, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So the, they 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 are getting the pieces together. All they need is you know they have Jarvis Landry and they have a couple of the young guys, but elite wide receiver like a Julio Jones, Tony Brown type thing, yeah, would would definitely help Baker Mayfield push into probably you know like Patrick Mahomes type season. You know, not Take saying him to the next level. Yeah. So and the other place is probably going to be the Green Bay Packers. The Packers got two first round picks. You could trade one of those first round picks for Antonio Brown. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Antonio Brown's going to be a big matchup um, yeah. or a big hookup. You know, if he can score 15 touchdowns, big bang, no matter how many touchdowns mm-hmm. he can score of Aaron Rodgers. Aaron That's Rodgers, true. you know, usually top five in the league in yeah. passing yards and passing touchdowns every year. And what, the best touchdown to interception ratio. So, yeah, that team, you know, the, they're a couple pieces away from Super Bowl contending team. They need defense, but... That, and for Matt LaFour, just to go out and get uh, Tony Brown would be, just be a big move for him as a starting off as a rookie head coach. So those are my predictions for Tony Brown. But like I said about Kareem Hunt signing with the Browns, is yeah. this a good move for the Browns? Is it a bad move for the Browns? You know, Does this do anything for the Browns? Um, as far as PR, it's, it's not a great move. But as far as... Um, performance on the field I think it's a great move for the Browns because like you said I agree they're at the very least a playoff contending team next year maybe even Super Bowl um especially it would depend on um how Pittsburgh fares without Antonio Brown next year um the division could be Cleveland's and they have no Le'Veon yeah and Pittsburgh's gonna lose Le'Veon as well and then so you know the Ravens just traded Joe Flacco and the Bengals are just the Bengals yeah, so, I mean, the AFC North is on the decline, except for the Browns. So, um, I think, I mean, yeah, they have uh, Nick Chubb and they have um, um, Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson, but, I mean, Kareem Hunt is... I think what's going to happen is well, Kareem Hunt's going to get suspended, regardless. Yeah. Know, even if it's four, six, or eight games. But I think what's yeah. going to happen is the moment he comes in, Duke Johnson becomes trade. Mm-hmm. And he's gonna get traded somewhere. I mean, Duke Johnson's pretty good, and you know he's that versatile. He's like David Johnson a little bit. Um, he can run. He was averaging five yards a carry last year. He can catch out the uh, backfield. So 
He can get you a thousand yards from scrimmage in a, uh, in a season, and he could definitely help a team. And I think they're gonna start him off first while Kareem Hunt is taking that suspension, and then just weave his way. I know, and Kareem yeah. Hunt weave his way in, kind of just move on from Duke Johnson. Granted, he is on a uh, both him and Nick Chubb's on a rookie contract, yeah. and Kareem Hunt's only on what one point four million. Like he he's on a cheapy yeah. deal. Yeah. So. Brown's got a nasty running team. You can do a three running back rotation. Yep. Most teams don't have that. Yep. But uh, in other news, Joe Flacco got traded to the Broncos. In we principle. Ha- in, principle. In, in principle, the trade doesn't become legit and official till March 13th when the new year begins. Uh, we don't know what was traded. They won't disclose that. They'll probably we'll find out about what a week I or so. What I heard was a mid-round pick is what the rumor is. Um, does Joe Flacco make the Broncos into a legit team again? Or is this kind of just like how they've been the past couple of years post Peyton Manning? I mean, I think Joe Flacco is an upgrade over Case Keenum, but it's not much of an upgrade because I honestly believe Joe Flacco has been one of the most overrated quarterbacks in the NFL the past few years. I mean, he's good, but he's not as good as people say. Um, so... I mean, this will make the Broncos maybe a borderline playoff team if their defense continues to play well. But um, He's going to need some wide receivers. Yeah, he's going to need some weapons around him. They have the running game, but the receivers, we'll see about that. And then lastly for the uh, news of the week, Demarius Thomas got cut from the Houston Texans. Where do you, th- you know, he, he officially becomes a free agent. Where do you think he's going to land? You know, is it going to be a contender? Is it just going to be whoever has the highest bidder? You know, does he want to go on a new team? I mean, it'll, it'll, because he, uh, he got cut because, um, A, he's um, guaranteed 14 million, I believe it is, something around there. And he also ruptured his Achilles, so he's not going to be around for the beginning part of the season. So he's not going to be paid 14 mil. He's going to um, come in on some maybe a one-year prove-it deal, something like that, to a contending team, I would think. Um, but, um, I mean, he's at, at that stage in his career where he's a one or two receiver, depending on what team you put him on. But um, Depending on the quarterback, too. Yeah. I think he's going to go back to the Broncos. If not, I think he might make his trip up to the Browns for an interview. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the Browns need a wide receiver. Uh, Demarius Thomas could definitely fit in you know, the second half of the season with Baker Mayfield. You know, you never you never want to have too, you know, too many weapons. Yeah. And, and the Browns got the money. The Broncos, you know, he like, might be still mad be at the Broncos being traded, but... But he knows the team. He knows the team. Um, got Joe Flacco now, so yeah. Well, that's the uh, this week news. Uh, for the main part, we're gonna be talking about quarterback situation in the NFL. Uh, teams that really need quarterbacks this year. Teams that's gonna need quarterback in the next year or two, and then kind of some of the free agents. So, doing some research on uh, teams that need quarterbacks this year that, that's an absolute need there's actually only three quarterbacks in the in the league that absolutely need quarterbacks it's uh, the Miami Dolphins Washington Redskins and the Jaguars mm-hmm. and with some quarterbacks that is going to be in the free agency granted some of these guys are not official yet um, Ryan Tannehill Nick Foles Teddy Bridgewater Case Keenum Tyrod Taylor Ryan Fitzpatrick and possibly Blake Bortles uh, you got a lot of quarterbacks with only three teams that need them. You know, what do you think these three teams are going to head into the direction? I know that the Jaguars have been talking about Nick Foles, and Nick Foles is probably going to be the landing spot for them as yeah. these other two teams might not go after a uh, veteran. Yeah. I feel like um, the team that goes after Nick Foles is going to be the team that's in most in win-now mode, and I feel like that's the Jaguars. They had a down year, but the year before that, they were in the AFC Championship. So, um, I mean, I could see the Jaguars going in hard on Nick Foles, maybe Ryan Fitzpatrick, but Nick Foles is the better quarterback. He's younger. And he's younger, and he's won a Super Bowl. 
So um, I, mean, I could see the Jags going Nick Foles. Um, the other two teams, Redskins, Dolphins, they're more in a rebuild mode. Um, Redskins, they had a good year last year. They could be in a win now, but... Um, yeah, Alex I mean, Smith is probably Alex. will not play in the 2019 season. Yeah. Last That'd time we saw his leg, he had, what, 200 different metal bars yeah. holding his leg up, so... There's a chance he'll never play again. But, yeah. I mean, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, but There's at least chance, for the 2019 but, season, he's yeah. not going to play at all. Yeah. And... What they have at quarterback now, you have Colt McCoy, which I mean, he's okay, but he's not going to take you to a 10-win season. Mark Sanchez is trash. And then Josh Johnson, who just played his first football in six years. Yeah. Who really didn't, you know, try to push them into the playoff contention. Yeah. So, I mean, if the Redskins go after someone win-now mode, they could try Ryan Tannehill. Um, but, I mean, you know. Or Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> Or Tyrod Taylor. I think Tyrod Taylor might be the best one for, uh, as, a, as a veteran for the Redskins. Mm -hmm. Out of everyone, Blake Bortles is also another possibility. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they need a gunslinger type guy. I mean, they have the defense. They At one point, they had a top five defense in the league. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you know, whoever they draft, they're probably, they might go defensively or maybe offensive line, something like that. But, uh, I mean, they got pieces that still need to come in, but this team could still make a legit shot at 9 10 wins. Could possibly yeah. win the division. Um, definitely with the uh, the Eagles decline, mm -hmm. if they get rid of Nick Foles, I mean they weren't doing so hot with Carson Wentz when he was healthy. The Cowboys are going to be in a weird situation. They're losing yeah. one of their top defense players, and then you know Dak Prescott's been shaky, and then the Giants, yeah. unless Eli Manning, you know, sparks up the last minute magic. Which I wouldn't sleep on the Giants next year either, but yeah. Now the Dolphins has the thirteenth pick, the Redskins have the twelfth pick, and the Jaguars I think has the seventh pick. Any of them picks a rookie quarterback? Mm. Uh, I mean, I would say maybe Miami would be the big best bet to pick up a rookie. Redskins maybe, but I mean. I think Redskins are 50-50, I would say. Miami is... I think the Redskins likely. might go the best available person. Yeah. Um, the I, Jaguars, I don't see going QB. Yeah, if not... If if they don't pick up a free agent, um, they'll go QB, but... Yeah, and the Redskins might be waiting for next year's uh, quarterback draft. Yeah. Now, the 2020 season, or, or quarterbacks that's going... Or teams that's going absolutely need a quarterback coming in the 2020 season, so next season... You got the Saints, Patriots, Chargers, Steelers, and Giants. All quarterbacks that are 38 years or older. Mm -hmm. You know, Drew Brees 40, Brady 40, about to be 42. Um, Eli Manning's like 39. Ben Big, 39. So, Philip uh, Rivers is getting up there too. This is a big quarterback class coming in 2020. You think all five of these teams going to draft a new quarterback or? Some of these free agents are going to be a new uh, new quarterback, say, like Teddy Bridgewater or Tyrod Taylor, who's still under 30 years old, or Ryan Tanner, who's only 30 years old, and then you know, whoever's going to get cut next year, you know, possibly like a Joe Flacco or a Case or Kirk Cousins, who doesn't pan out in, in uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. And I think it would depend on how each of these teams do next year because the Saints number one seed, Patriots won the Super Bowl, Chargers they were a half game from being the number one seed, Steelers I could see them, Steelers and the Giants, Giants I hear they might draft uh, Dwayne Haskins this year, we'll see how that goes, um, back up Eli for a year and then take over next year, but we'll see, um, Steelers I could see being the most likely to um, draft a quarterback next year. Yeah, the Steelers just drafted a quarterback the last three years, and they usually give up on him real quick. Yeah. So. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see, because um, Pittsburgh, like we said, losing Antonio Brown, losing Le'Veon Bell, they're losing those weapons on offense. Their defense is in decline. But they also, they got money now. Mm -hmm. You know, since you don't got to pay them, you got money. You got guys like Tyrod Taylor who... Not an elite quarterback, but he doesn't he doesn't make mistakes. He's not gonna get you thirty touchdowns or four thousand yards. Yeah. He's the guy that I can move the chains, I can get you in scoring position. Yeah. But y'all need to do work for me too. 
They're gonna need to change the offense for Tyrod Taylor because he's a run first kind of kind of guy. And then you got like Teddy Bridgewater who he can run, but he's a passer first. He hasn't really played that much. And then you got Blake Bortles who's what 27, 28 years old. You know he's gonna get a second shot. Yeah. You know you don't you don't you don't give up on a top five pick that easy. No. He was a third overall pick in the yeah. 2013 draft. Speculations, there's also Derek Carr might be moving on. Dak Prescott moving on. Um, Carson Wentz could be, be moving on if his uh, injury history keeps moving, you know, yeah. going. Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota. So there's a lot of quarterbacks that could be moving in the 2020 year. On top yeah. of that, with potentially five or six first round quarterbacks, this is, 2020 is going to be the most interesting year in the NFL. Yeah. But, um,. And then there is also prospects in the AAF. If you guys haven't watched those, it's actually a dope football program. They're a 1980s football, essentially a 1980s NFL. I mean, big hits, you know, less yeah. pass interferences. Mm -hmm. You know, there's men playing football. If you guys haven't, check them out. They actually beat NBA ratings on their first opening week. It's only eight teams, but watch them expand. And, uh, they've got a lot of washed up NFL players, you know, like Trent Richardson or some kickers, uh, some quarterbacks. So, mm -hmm. that's fun. If you guys haven't, give them a give them a look. Look at some highlights. They're really cool. But there's also but probably going to be some uh, prospects coming from there going into the NFL, you know. Yeah. You know, some people might want to stay with the AFL, but, you know, the NFL, who, you know, you can get up to 10, 15 mil with more yeah. legacy. So yeah. I'd watch those guys too. Um, you know, there's only eight teams, but if one or two quarterbacks move on to the NFL, yeah, it could happen. But um, yeah, man, two at Tagalua. You got what, what Herbert from the uh, Oregon. Yeah. So and a couple of other guys. Although I want to sleep on Will Greer this year, the quarterback mm -hmm. from West Virginia. He's projected a second round pick. I think that's who Miami might go after this year. Uh, if they don't go first round, if they doesn't get Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray, uh, I think Will Greer is a very underrated guy. Kind of like Derek Carr. Derek Carr was a second round pick. Colin Kaepernick was also a second round pick. And yeah. then uh, there's another uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback that went in like second round pick. Oh, Jimmy Garoppolo was a second round pick too. Yeah. So I'd keep an eye on Will Greer. Uh, for either the Redskins or the Miami Dolphins, but um, a lot of a lot of speculation for the quarterbacks coming into the next two seasons. Uh, Nick Foles is probably the best quarterback this year. Yeah. Next year there's going to be a lot more quarterbacks, but um, keep your eye on that, and then uh, keep your eye on Antonio Brown, and then also Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is going to be joining a new team uh, coming up in a month or so. Um, he's probably going to go for contender. Hopefully not the Patriots. Yeah. I'll kill myself if it's the Patriots. Him or Antonio Brown. But, yeah. um, thank you for tuning in for our episode. Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Like I said, get that t-shirt going on. You know, sub, like, and then comment your favorite NFL player. Uh, and, you know, thank you for watching this week's episode. Hopefully we'll get you on a next week episode. But, um. Yeah, comment comment some questions for us for next week's episode. We can do some questioning and answering. But with that being said, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and week. And see ya.